And if we're going on to fighters of that era, this is the one that lots of people have been interested in. And it's the one that I was interested in the most. The Pittsburgh windmill, Harry Greb. Now, Harry Greb could have a very, very strong claim as the greatest of all time. He is without a doubt the greatest, he, he, he owns the greatest resume ever. I've written some notes on my phone here about Harry Greb when I was reading his book. Now, this man died at 32 years of age. There's no footage of him. He's almost, he's almost mythological. Without a doubt, one of the, the craziest fighters you've ever seen. Now, I was going through his career, right? Over 13 years, he had 299 fights. In 1919, he went 45 and 0 alone. He holds the world. He holds the world record for wins against the most Hall of Famers, defeating 16 different Hall of Famers. He's the only man to defeat the great heavyweight Gene Tunney, fighting him five times, and in many people's eyes, deser deserving more than one victory. He beat the great welterweight champion, one of the greatest fighters of all time, Mickey Walker. He beat the likes of Hall of Famers Jack Blackburn, Maxie Rosenblum, Tommy Loughran four times. Tommy Gibbons twice, Kid Norfolk, Leo Hawk three times, Mike Gibbons, Mike O'Dowd, Billy Misk, Jack Dillon twice, Paul Jeff Smith six times, Tiger Flowers, Mickey Walker, and Basil Nowinski six times. All of those guys are International Boxing Hall of Famers. Now, International Boxing Hall of Famers are only the best of the era. Even world champions don't make that list. There are a select few, especially in the old school. It's just unbelievable. The guy went... In 1919, 45-0 alone, defeating many of those great Hall of Famers. In his prime, between 1919 and 1923, he had one loss in 110 fights. It's just a joke. Greb would fight 40 rounders, 20 rounders, 15 rounders, 6 rounders, 10 rounders. He it, it didn't care. When he boxed the great Mickey Walker, he boxed... It was one of the most ruthless fights ever. And you see, Greb... In his younger days, he didn't have that many knockouts. I think he had about 45 knockouts in his 300 fights. But he was an amazing mover. He never stopped throwing punches. And he would just outwork people. So he's supposed to have a pretty weird style, a pretty swarming style. As I say, there's no footage of him. The only footage you can see, he looks pretty terrible. But he's, he's messing around. If you look at the likes of Gene Tunney, Mickey Walker, Tommy Loughran, like the, 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 the footage of the guys he beat, you know he was good. Because those guys, to this day... Are unbelievable fighters some of the greatest ever in that time where he was fighting he was hit by a car i have a list of all of the injuries greb suffered in his career up to 1919 which is when i had to i stopped i, I haven't finished the book yet he suffered two broken hands, two broken noses, broken ribs, a broken arm in one fight, ligament damage in his ankle, multiple split lips, a boil on the forehead which became infected and he was hospitalised with fears of pneumonia, cut in the ear which became infected, he was cut over a dozen times, as I've already said, run over by a car, split his head open, <laughs> slipping in a Turkish bath and boils again on his head. He was also in the Navy in the war which stopped him from being as active considering he's had 300 fights in 13 years. And there are many more injuries that I haven't even got to in the book yet. But the one that stands out the most, considering he, def he dominated for so long, is he was completely blind for a lot of his career in one eye, and he never let on. It's just unbelievable. His story is a joke. To deal with these injuries, he would just get in and fight. He would just get on with it. There's a story about him early on injecting cocaine into his hands when he's got a broken hand and getting in and fighting. These guys are just cut from a different cloth. <clears throat> Basically defeated all of the great fighters from welterweight to heavyweight. Called out Jack Dempsey, the heavyweight champion in the world, and Jack Dempsey just wouldn't fight him. So he goes and spars Jack Dempsey and absolutely massacres Jack Dempsey in sparring. And there's people watching these. There's lots of journalists that are recorded here. Just an unbelievable, unbelievable story. Uh, and, and, and a guy that went through so much as well lost his brother early on lost his wife early on just yeah an unbelievable crazy fight I was supposed to be a bit of a womanizer had fights with the mob was shot at with guns as well if you can read about Harry Greb's story I would definitely recommend it so he's had his last fight I believe against Tiger Flowers off the top of my head lost lost, for the, lost the middleweight title 
and uh, he has a he has well he has an eye surgery to take his eye out and put a glass eye in but he broke his nose in a car accident he used to drive like a nutcase as well he used to drive crazy everything this guy did was nuts and he has a minor no uh, a minor nose surgery and uh, at the age of 32 he never comes out of it he dies 32 years old one of the greatest sportsmen one of the greatest boxers of all time dies from a minor nose surgery to deal with all of those broken noses. And his great rival, Tiger Flowers, another legendary middleweight champion, would die the following year at the age of 32 from a minor nose surgery too. But Harry Greb, oh, I can't speak enough about Harry Greb. A legend amongst legends.